Hey everybody, it's Kelly from Ready Set Drone, and today I have the Hubson H501S. Gonna take it for a flight, give you some pros and cons, and check it out. First of all, I'd like to tell everyone this is courtesy of GearBest. They sent it to me to review. Um, I've actually had this thing for about two weeks, and part of the reason it's taken me so long to do this video is that I had some problems with this thing in the beginning that I'm gonna talk you guys through. So let's start with the pros. First of all, this thing is just cool looking. It's um, very solid feeling. It's got brushless motors. It's got built-in GPS. It has uh, altitude hold. It has a follow me mode. It has return to home. It's got a lot of the uh, features that a higher end quad would have for a lot lower price. This thing's running between 250 and 300 US dollars. It's got a 1080p camera, and it does stream 5.8 gigahertz uh, FPV, which means that you can use this uh, Fat Sharks. It does come with a remote control that has a monitor built in. I think it's a 4.3 inch remote uh, monitor, a little LCD screen that has a cool little shade that pops out, as you can see. Um, the monitor's pretty low resolution, although most uh, Fat Shark goggles are as well, but, uh, but it, it works well enough for you to fly it. FPV either using the monitor. Uh, the monitor also has a lot of your menu and setup on it. Um, it does have a headless mode. It's got a pretty decent flight time with this 7.4 volt 2S 2700 milliamp hour battery. So uh, that's, that's a good thing because you can get it up in the air for about 15 to 20 minutes per flight. It's pretty windy today, so I'm curious to see how that impacts my flight time, but uh, generally, so far, I've had pretty good flight time with the thing. So overall, I feel like it's a pretty good value for what you get in terms of the price. Now, let's go through the cons real quick. I'm just gonna talk you through them, then I'm gonna show you how to avoid some of them. Um, first of all, the remote control, when you open up the back, this thing takes eight AA batteries, and it eats through them like crazy. So that's really not that great. Um, it does have a JST connector inside, so instead of eight AA's, you can actually use a LiPo battery with the JST connector. Um, the one I'm using in it currently is, let's get it out here. This is an E-Flight uh, 2S 7.4 volt, 800 milliamp hour battery with the JST connector on the end. This thing runs it way better than the AA batteries. So if you're gonna get this thing, you can try it with the AA's, but I suggest ordering a couple of these uh, 7.4 volt, 800 milliamp JST connector batteries before you uh, use the remote. If you do end up using the AA's, I will tell you that they're pretty hard to get in and out. It comes with this thing, which has the JST connector on the end. This thing barely fits in there, it's very tight number one, and number two, the batteries actually don't seat that well in here. So the first couple of times I tried it with the double A's, it wouldn't come on, and I realized the battery spring wasn't pushing the batteries and making connection all the way across. So if you do end up using double A's, make sure you get a screwdriver or something and just make sure all the batteries are touching so you have a complete circuit. So a couple of other negative things I wanna tell you about, uh, minor things, but this remote control comes with these little rubber things on the controllers. I'm the type of person, I'm like, hey, that's cool, it gives you a little extra grip, and it uh, keeps these things, I don't know, newer, fresher, whatever, so I left them on. Well, these things actually limit the amount of range you get in the way you pull it around, so you actually need to take them off, at least off of the, uh, the sticks, the left and right stick, because otherwise you don't get the full range on these things, and that can be problematic, number one. Number two, um, I actually, when you arm it, you pull the sticks, it's either down and out or down and in, I forget which one, but whichever one it is, I wasn't able to arm it because I had not calibrated this thing yet, and the sticks were physically going all the way down, but the calibration wasn't set so that it was actually seeing it all the way down. So in other words, it was showing me that they were going down 80% instead of 100%, and so it wouldn't arm. So once I calibrated the sticks, there was no problem. And there are instructions in the instruction manual on how to calibrate the sticks. The instruction manual is actually pretty good. It covers a lot of stuff like that. Finally, the other thing that uh, was not great was I couldn't figure out why I couldn't see the camera. Well, it turns out that the camera transmitter and the receiver in this thing were set to different frequencies. There's a menu setting you can go into here and, and change the frequency of the receiver. Once you do that, you're good, but 
Um, if you don't see the camera at first, it's because the transmitter's on a different frequency. So just go in and change it uh, in your receiver and then you should be good to go. The transmitter actually comes with two different antennas. One is for the actual transmitter to control the aircraft. That's this uh, standard straight one. It's the 2.4 gigahertz. It screws right in. Um, you maybe could replace this with a clover leaf, but uh, this seems to work fine for me. And then it also comes with this paddle uh, receiver, which is for your 5.8 gigahertz, which is for your video. Now this thing you actually want to have screwed in and then tilted up slightly so that it's flat when it's facing the uh, facing the quad. So kind of like kind of like that. That's that's the ideal setting for this. And the the FPV is actually pretty good with this thing on it. So um, so I've got those guys on. There are um, several switches. There's a GPS switch. There is a, oh, sorry, it's that one there. There is a return to home switch, which is this one here. You wanna have the return to home turned off and the GPS turned on when you first start it up. And then uh, the other two switches are for the other flight modes, which are headless and follow, follow mode. I forget, I think the left one is headless and the right one is uh, follow. So pretty well laid out control. Again, it has this cool little screen that you can pop up and you can see the, see the control um, screen in here, which has a bunch of menu stuff. I'll uh, do some close-ups of, close of this in a second. One other thing I really like about this guy is there's plenty of room in the battery compartment for the battery. So um, I don't believe there's an on-off switch on this thing, so you're gonna wanna make sure when you plug the battery in that you have it level because the accelerometers are gonna calibrate and it wants to make sure it's level. Um, it does have an SD card slot right here in this side. I've got a uh, small SD card inserted in there, which I'll do some recording to in a little bit. Um, and you can stop and start the uh, recording and video, uh, photo and video on the actual uh, control, which is nice. You don't have to run it the whole time. So you can see it's a pretty good fit in there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug in the battery. Make sure you got it the right way. And I'm gonna keep it level as I do it in case it's uh, calibrating. You actually can manually calibrate the, um, you can manually calibrate the uh, level as well. So I might just end up doing that since I'm holding it right now. And then you kind of got to stuff, uh, stuff the cable in there and close this up. Now you can see it's blinking yellow and I do have signal on my, uh, I do have signal on my uh, uh, remote control. Look down here and see, that's actually the uh, live shot that I've got from the camera. Um, you can see the uh, telemetry data down here on the bottom, which kind of tells you, uh, I think it's actually um, position. It's telling me that I need to check the gyro sensor, which probably means that I'm not, uh, I didn't have it level. Upper left is the, the amount of juice I have left, volts I have left in the remote control. Upper right is the amount of uh, juice I have left in the actual quadcopter. And it says, don't move the aircraft. Yeah, so I'm kind of moving it around. So let me set it down here and see if the gyros set themselves up. Okay, you'll notice these lights are currently blinking red. That means that the compass needs to be calibrated. So what you do, you hold it out uh, flat and you spin around. Usually takes almost two complete spins, one and a half spins, and then you see they turn green. So notice that they're now blinking green. It's kind of hard to see because it's bright out here. Then you put the nose down and you do the same thing. Once they stop blinking red or green, then they're good to go. Okay, as I mentioned, to arm it, you pull the sticks down and out, which gets them spinning. That's also how you disarm it. Go ahead and take off. So we are currently in GPS mode. We have, it's showing me that we've got uh, 10 satellites. So we are uh, pretty good in terms of how many satellites we have. I don't know if you can actually see the screen in there and you can see it's pretty windy out here I don't know if you can see the flag over there but it's it's holding in place pretty well I'm gonna bring it over a little closer to us so I'm not 
not touching the stick. Move it out and down. I'm not touching the stick currently, and it is just hovering in place. And you can see back there that flag is just uh, flying like crazy. So that's me not touching the stick and the GPS holding it in place. Now, the altitude, it's kind of going up and down a little bit, and it's, it's moving probably within, I'd say within uh, one meter range. But for as much wind as there is out here right now, it's really holding pretty well. And I've got a great FPV view of it currently. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start my start my camera. And the way you start video, I think, is you hit the enter button, and now it's recording. I'm gonna fly it up there by the flag. right over us. Okay, now I've let go of the sticks. It's just hovering. Now I'm gonna switch it into uh, out of GPS mode and see what happens. So, here we go, switching out of GPS. And I don't know if you can see, but the wind is taking it. Flipping it back to GPS mode. Okay, so I am Covering it right now. I'm not even holding the remote. The remote's actually down there on the ground. And this is just it hovering in um, GPS mode. Again, you can tell it's pretty quiet. It's uh, locked in pretty well. It's super cool looking. Really stands out against that blue sky. I'm a big fan of the trim. There's the camera on front. Overall, I really like this quad. It is very solid feeling. It does great in the wind with the GPS. It, uh, the brushless motors are really quiet. It's quick to put together. Uh, the lights are cool looking, the LEDs, the design is amazing. And it's just a fun little quad for the price. Um, especially considering that you get GPS and you get follow me, you get return to home. Uh, I did not test the follow me mode, so I'm not sure how well that works. Uh, there are video, other videos out there that do test it. Um, but generally for the price, I think it's a great little quad. Now a couple of notes that I mentioned early on. It does have some issues when you are going to set it up in that you've got to adjust the frequency of the camera if you want to be able to see it on your, on your screen. Um, you've got to mess with the battery. And like I said, I really suggest getting a LiPo that, with a JST connector that can go inside the uh, transmitter instead of using double A's. And you have to be sure that you calibrate your uh, remote before you try to fly it because otherwise um, you're not getting that full extension on every stick and therefore it, it doesn't want to uh, arm and disarm very easily, which was something I had trouble with the first day. I just, I got it to arm and then I couldn't get it to disarm and then after a while I couldn't get it to arm again. And once I pulled those rubber stoppers off and calibrated my sticks, it was a lot better. So is it worth 250 bucks? I think so. Um, it's a fun little quad. I'll, one other thing I'll mention is that it is very tame to fly in GPS mode. It tends to want to stay in one place. So if you're learning, it's actually pretty simple and easy to fly in GPS mode. However, if you uh, put it into attitude mode, take the GPS off, it will really go and uh, fly pretty fast and get away from you pretty quickly. That's where the FPV comes in handy. But the nice thing is you can always flip the GPS switch and it's like throwing on the brakes. I appreciate you watching. This is the Hubson H501S 
Again, this one was provided by GearBest. I'll put a link if you want to buy one in the description and also on the webpage. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you really like it and you want to see more videos about drones, please subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. We'll see you next time.